After writing two articles concerning Easter and why it is a Christian celebration in its entirety, after some criticism, it dawned on me that most people will not read long-winded articles, and even after a few minutes of sharing my articles with people on the internet, instead of them taking time to read and examine them, most would speedily respond by copying and pasting something about a pagan goddess from some obscure website. So after some time I created a video on the topic, which is basically a one hour reading of the two articles with several pictures to keep people's interest. Although the video was a bit rushed, it gives a good visual account of why I believe Easter should remain in Acts chapter 12 verse 4 and also remain part of the annual church service. Supporters and Critics When I first wrote my Easter article, world-leading expert on the English language David Crystal gave me some pointers about Easter and its German connection and mentioned that the article was accurate and good. Although both slightly disagreeable on certain minor points, Christianity Today has since published a similar article on Easter being Christian and also Jonathan Safadi of Creation Ministries International has used the information to confirm my stance on Easter. When I approached James White from Alpha and Omega Ministries who wrote the book King James Only Controversy, he speedily rebuked me and called me a Ruckmanite for making such claims and banned me from his forum. On the flip side, D.A. Waite who wrote Defending the King James Bible printed parts of the articles in his newsletter after having formally taught that Easter was pagan. His contemporary Jack Mormon also read the articles and said that the information had taken the matter forward considerably from his former article on the topic. King James only pagan concept. In fact, the majority of animosity has surprisingly come from King James only supporters who have swallowed the false King James only concept that Easter is a pagan festival. I mentioned to one King James Version supporter that if Easter in the King James Version is pagan, and yet the underlying Greek says Pascha, that would make the King James Version a paraphrase and not a literal translation. I can't understand the logic behind many King James only people who should have naturally gravitated toward the revelations in my former articles, but it seems their alliance to and defense of people such as Peter Ruckman, Sam Gipp and Gail Replinger is stronger than their alliance to and defense of the truth. Although many who are not in the hyper King James only camp, but still believe the King James to be an accurate translation of the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, have accepted the teaching as orthodox. In conclusion to the responses, all I can say is I still thoroughly believe what I have written to be factual and correct, and my steadfastness in defending my position has only further strengthened my stance. 2000 Years of Greek If you simply go to Google Translate, and choose to translate from English into Greek and type in the words Passover and Easter, the answer in Greek for both is Pascha, Pascha. One Pascha, Passover, is the Old Testament type, and the other Pascha, Easter, is the New Testament fulfillment. This has been the same in Greek for 2,000 years. Only the context formulated the difference. This is evident in the Church Fathers' writings, who often use Pascha for both the Old Testament and New Testament feasts. Tyndale invented the word Passover, and thus we Englishmen no longer had one word for the Old Testament feast and New Testament feast, but two. Previously, we used Easter, sometimes Pasch, but rarely. In Scripture, Passover was practiced before the resurrection occurred, and Easter, meaning resurrection, was practiced by the church after the resurrection occurred. Acts chapter 12 verse 4 occurred after the cross, being the only scripture befitting the post-resurrection context of Easter and not Passover.
Bead and Pagan Roots. Over the years, I've been asked repeated questions by people who have tried to cling to the pagan goddess myth. It was qualified in the previous two articles that Easter was considered by the reformers to be the celebration of the resurrection and never once referring to a pagan goddess. But what about the English historian Bede and the goddess Usta claims? The Venerable Bede, 672 to 735, claimed that the word Easter came from Usta, the goddess of the Saxons. The first month, which the Latins called January, is Juli. February is called Solmanath, March, Rethmanath, April, Yostamanath. Yostamanath has a name which is now translated Paschal Month, and which was once called after a goddess of theirs named Yosta, in whose honour feasts were celebrated in that month. Now they designate that Paschal season by her name, calling the joys of the new rite by the time-honoured name of the old observance. While many now understand that Hislop's phonetic connections between Easter and Ishtar is without any solid linguistic evidence, they still have questions and doubts about English Yosta, the goddess. Is the English Easter Yosta theory based on some linguistic data? Bede notes that the native Old English month Yostamoneth, Old English Yosta month, was equivalent to the month of April. Yet the feast held in the goddess's honour during Yostamoneth had gone out of use by the time of his writing and had been replaced with the Christian custom, the Paschal season. Homophones and Dictionary Listings In the English language, there are things called homophones. Some examples of homophones are stalk, part of a plant, and stalk, to follow, harass a person. Left, past tense of leave, and left, opposite of right. Rose, as in flower, and rose, past tense of rise. Words such as carrot and carrot and carrot, two, two and two, apply here also. In our case, we have English Easter and Yosta. Although spelt slightly differently, Many English dictionaries have placed them under the same title of Easter. It must be noted that any definition that appears in a dictionary is separate from another entry. The two entries are separate and not under the same entry. Many English dictionaries mention both a pagan and a Christian definition for Easter. The 1717 English Dictionary states that Easter, Aosta, Osta, a Saxon goddess whose feast they observed in Easter month, April. But below it is the definition Easter, the Christian Passover, in remembrance of Christ's death and resurrection, etc. This is from an English Dictionary, 1717, by Alicia Coles. Noah Webster's Dictionary in 1828 has Easter, Anglo-Saxon, Easter, Estran, uh, Paschal Fest, Easter, akin to German, Ustern, French, Anglo-Saxon, uh, Esther, a goddess of light or spring, in honour of whom a festival was celebrated in April, whence this month was, one, an annual church festival commemorating Christ's resurrection and occurring on Sunday, the second day after Good Friday. It corresponds to the Pascha or Passover of the Jews, and most nations still give it the name under the various forms of Pascha, Pasque, Pasch, and Pasch. 1. The day on which the festival is observed. Easter Day on which the rest of the movable feast depends, is always the first Sunday after the 14th day of the calendar moon, which 14th day falls on, or next after the 21st of March, according to the rules laid down 
for the construction of the calendar. So that if the 14th day happen on a Sunday, Easter day is the Sunday after. American Dictionary of the English Language, 1828, uh, through the 1911 edition, Noah Webster. Nathan Bailey, in his 1802, A Universal Etymological English Dictionary, said, Easter, Easter of Estre, Saxon, a goddess of the Saxons, in honour of whom sacrifices were offered about that time of year. Austin Teutonic, and then has a solemn festival appointed in commemoration of Christ's death and resurrection. A Universal Etymological English Dictionary, 1802, Nathan Bailey. The Eastern Connection. When one does a study on Easter in English, Easter and Yosta are etymologically related to the word East. But that's as far as it goes. In reality, there are many words that come from East, which is akin to German Ust. East and Ust simply have similar roots, meaning the dawn or sunrise. To Christians, this word is related to the resurrection and the rising of the sun, at which time of the day the Lord Jesus was discovered to be risen. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulchre. Matthew 28 verse 1. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Mark 16.2. Some scriptures point to Christ's resurrection as being the great dawning. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place and until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Revelation chapter 22 verse 16. While pagans obviously named their goddess after East for whatever reasons they did, it must be made abundantly clear that the word East is totally neutral and is neither Christian nor pagan, good or evil. There are several examples of neutral words being related to East, one being the Germanic Osterreich, which is simply known as the country of Austria, from Uster, East, and Reich, Kingdom, which includes the word Uster being the same word Luther used for Easter in his Bible, and the same word claimed to be a pagan goddess. Austria, while having Uster in it, is not related to the Christian Uster or the pagan Uster, but simply means East Kingdom. Many words in all languages can have a similar root, like undertaker, understanding, or undermine, but this does not mean that these words are exclusively associated. There is nothing evil about East, and words that derive from it should not be seen as close relatives of each other with good or evil meanings. Ust simply means East in German. And because a goddess is named after such a common term, should not taint any other common word related to Ust. Pagan Christianity? Just because a pagan goddess existed does not mean that Easter derives from Yusta in any shape or form. From my research, I have concluded that Easter is derived from the German word to resurrect and remains so today as I expressed in my earlier articles. Our word Easter is of Saxon origin and of precisely the same import with its German cognate, Ostern. The latter is derived from the old Teutonic form of or first a hen or first a hung, that is, resurrection. But for argument's sake, let's amuse ourselves with the concept that 
the name Easter originated from a pagan goddess. What is the worst case scenario of such an association? Well, etymologically, the name of the goddess Easter simply means morning. If a local witch called her cult the dawn of the morning, relating back to this goddess, I wouldn't stop using the word morning, even if I found that it had derived from the same evil place. Christ even uses morning as part of his title in Revelation 22.16. The old high German Eastorum simply means to dawn. East is not evil. Morning is not evil. In fact, does Satan own any words? Are any words his to claim and are we forbidden to use them? What if perhaps the early English Christians took the entire idea of Easter to slap the pagan goddess in the face and proclaim that Jesus is the only resurrection as a testimony of the Anglo-Saxon Christians' rejection of this goddess? Realistically, many words come from pagan concepts such as the days of the week. Friday means the day of Fridge, Fridge being the name of a Norse goddess. Wednesday and Saturday are also derived from the names of pagan gods, Woden and Saturnus. When we evaluate the pagan roots concept, it really comes down to the Hebrew roots and sacred names movements. Books like Pagan Christianity label almost everything as pagan. Well, of course it is. No culture and language was sanctified except for the culture of the Hebrews of the Old Testament. Therefore, everything non-Hebrew is thus by default pagan. So unless we are all planning on becoming Jewish and practicing their customs and language, we use the languages of those around us, as the New Testament writers use the thoroughly pagan Koine Greek with words like theos, which was used to describe Greek gods, or concepts like Hades, which in the New Testament is translated as hell, but in Greek mythology was the god of the underworld. If the writers of sacred scripture under the inspiration of God didn't see any evil conspiracy to borrow such pagan words and to use them for the glory of God, nor should we, how can a translation be done into any culture if we cannot use the common words of that culture? In summary and conclusion, but I personally don't think such a thing happened. England and Germany are large places and traditionally had a rich culture. Just because a word is a homophone does not mean that the meaning is shared. East simply referred to the dawn or sunrise. And we need to recognize that both pagans and Christians wish to use the word East for their respective purposes. Perhaps, as I assume, these two factions may have even been in separate locations in the Germanic-speaking world and merely have the neutral word East as their common bond. Not everything with German Ust or English East is related to a pagan Easter, nor for that matter a Christian Easter. If I did this in the English language to words like Allah and said anything with the Al sound is evil, like Alexandria, alien, alchemy, I would be laughed at by linguists. Now suppose Satan worshippers worshipped on a hill called the Western Mount. Just because the term West is in the name of the Mount, doesn't mean that it is related to Westminster and it is etymologically absurd to think so. Usterberg in German simply means eastern city from Uster eastern and Berg city or town. Places like Westminster and Southampton are simply names relating to a particular direction. I suppose soon People will use these phony phonetic comparisons to rationale that Australia is Australia, the wicked nation of sex and eggs. 
We wouldn't naturally assume that George Bush has etymological links to the burning bush. We don't think that euthanasia is euthanasia or that example is a type of egg sample. In this video, we have toyed with the idea that the pagan goddess was genuinely a deity and that Bede's concept was true. Now, even if this was the case, the worst thing that could result from this is that Easter and Yosta are related to East. But let us also consider these facts about Bede's account. Bede's account is the only historical document claiming the existence of a goddess, Yosta. So every single claim of Yosta, even existing, falls back upon Bede's writing. So while in the first two articles and the first video, the concept of Ishtar and Astarte being related to Easter was dismissed, but Further still, the concept that Yosta even existed is very flimsy indeed. It all hinges upon Bede. The Encyclopedia Britannica states concerning Bede's claims. This view presumes that Christians appropriated pagan names and holidays for their highest festivals. Given the determination with which Christians combated all forms of paganism, this appears a rather dubious presumption. Professor Ronald Hutton in his book The Stations of the Sun in 1996 draws doubt on Bede's account and states the following. It falls into a category of interpretations which Bede admitted to be his own rather than generally agreed or proven fact. There is no equivalent goddess in the Norse Eddas or ancient Germanic paganism. The Anglo-Saxon Yostamonath simply meant month of opening or the month of beginnings and concludes that there is no evidence for a pre-Christian festival in the British Isles in March or April. There are further reasons to doubt Bede's account. While days are often named after pagan gods, months generally are not and one of the Frankish King Charlemagne's reforms was to rename the months, and April was renamed Ostermoneth. He was the scourge of Germanic paganism, and most certainly would not have named a month after a pagan goddess. Note, April was already known by the Anglo-Saxon version of this name, since Bede, some 50 years before Charlemagne, referred to April as Ostermoneth. As such, we have this from a Lutheran question and answer website. In the Frankish church, the name of the festival of the resurrection included the Latin word Alba, white. When this was translated into German, Alba was mistaken for a Latin word for sunrise, which also was Alba. For this reason, Alba was translated with the old German word for sunrise, which has come to us in the form Easter, German Ostern. In many languages, the word for East means rising. It appears that the festival of the resurrection already has the name rising, since this seems to be the original meaning of Easter. The fact is, in English, Easter meant the Jewish Passover, and also the Christian celebration of the resurrection, and a supposed goddess. April was the month of spring, when the sun began to shine after a long winter and the spring equinox occurred. So the Jews of England, the Christians of England, and supposedly the pagans of England all gladly use this word. But now we must conclude that it's somehow owned by Satan. The online etymological dictionary says Old English East. East, easterly, eastward, from Proto-Germanic, us to ustra, east toward the sunrise. Old Frisian, est, east, asta, eastward. Dutch, ust, Old Sax Saxon, ost, 
Old High German Ostern, German Ust, Old Norse Ustra, from the East, from Proto-Indo-European Us, to shine, especially dawn, Sanskrit Ushas, dawn, Greek Urion, morning, Old English, uh, Irish, sorry, Yusha, Lithuanian Yuzara, dawn, um, Latin Aurora, dawn, uh, Oster, south, uh, literally to shine. The east is the direction in which the dawn breaks. And so as we can see, uh, despite my um, bad Anglo-Saxon dialect, we can see that there's literally hundreds of words that relate to the dawn, to the morning, to uh, east, to sunrise, and to conclude that these are evil somehow uh, is etymologically absurd. So shall we reject Easter? Dr. Paul Mayer, professor of ancient history at Western Michigan University, observes that if all the evidence is weighed carefully and fairly, it is indeed justifiable, according to the canons of historical research, to conclude that the sepulcher of Joseph of Arimathea, in which Jesus was buried, was actually empty on the morning of the first Easter. Uh, nowadays, there's a lot of good information concerning Easter on the internet. If you want to read my articles or look at my videos, uh, you can go to easterau.com. Uh, there's a fantastic uh, website called kjvtoday.com, which has a good article on Easter. It has many good articles. Uh, Will Kinney has done fantastic work in defending the King James. Um, if you look at his website, brandplucked.webs.com, um, he's also done a, a YouTube um, voiceover uh, uh, concerning Easter. Um, there's a new site called uh, midaxe.net and they have an article on Easter. They seem to be yet um, uh, to make a conclusion about Easter, but they have a lot of good information and I borrowed some of their information for this video and uh, I thought I'd reference that here. Uh, Scott Jones, who had lamblion.net, he's taken his website down for some reason, uh, but you can uh, find his website if you go to uh, Wayback Machine, if you type that into Google uh, and type in lamblion.net, you can find his old Easter article, which is uh, one of the first articles that I'd uh, read concerning Easter and it not being a pagan festival. Up until then, I did believe and teach that Easter was a pagan festival. One of my previous pastors uh, during Easter, he um, said, does anyone here in church know what Easter means? And I put my hand up boldly and said, Easter is a pagan festival. And so that was probably about um, almost 15 years ago now. And it wasn't long after that that I started to study this issue. And what I found was uh, people like Will Kinney and Scott Jones had already discovered that uh, Easter was not pagan. And this helped me a lot, and this gave me a lot of insight and a lot of understanding into uh, the accuracy of the King James. Because I used to actually tell people that the King James is accurate, except for in uh, this place where, where it uses the pagan word Easter, it should be translated as Passover. And so since then, I've gone through um, many different definitions uh, that have doubt placed upon them by modern textual critics, and I've found that... Uh, Every time, it just comes down to my own ignorance of uh, the King James. The King James is a perfect translation. It is a perfect translation of the Greek, Aramaic, uh, and Hebrew. And um, I thoroughly believe that um, the King James is accurate in every word. Some of the words might have gone out of date. They might have become archaic. But we can trust that the King James is accurate. Uh, when we look at Easter, uh, when we look at these studies um, that I've done, they show us that there's a wealth of information that, uh, that we need to know. And people need to be teaching uh, this sort of stuff in churches. They need to be teaching this sort of stuff in Bible colleges. But instead, people are learning marketing and 
they're learning you know church growth and they're looking at uh, Rick Warren's books and purpose driven life and all this stuff they, they need to be learning history they need to be learning uh, linguistics they need to be learning how to read English and a lot of people just simply don't know the basics of English and so they come up with these foolish uh, concepts these uh, pagan roots concepts and so I hope you've enjoyed um, uh, this uh, this movie I, I intend to do uh, one soon on the word church and why uh, we should use the church in our uh, common language and also in our Bible versions and uh, there's a few other words I want to look at too like the word unicorn and uh, Jehovah and a few other ones uh, some of you guys would be very familiar with these things but to a lot of other people this is news to them and so uh, thanks for watching if you have uh, any feedback um, please comment uh, below and if you want to uh, help edit my website I run a website called texasreceptus.com uh, I'm not your usual Texas Receptus sort of guy a lot of people who uh, prefer a Texas Receptus position over a King James only position uh, tend to want to change a lot of things about the King James. I believe the King James is 100% accurate to the Greek and Hebrew. Um, I believe the King James is without, without error. And so, but I have not adopted the theory that the King James is extra revelation or a special revelation. For English people, yes, because we speak English, but for everyone else, they need uh, translations into their own, their own language from the Greek, from the Hebrew from the Aramaic. Now the King James guys did a fantastic job and I don't believe it can be bettered in a sense where um, what they've done is perfect. Now I believe that the Bible can be updated, that there's, there's no sin in that. And so uh, on the Texas Receptus website, I've been involved in a project there for many years where we've been trying to update the archaic language of the King James without losing any doctrinal significance of an update and so um, feel free to uh, go through my website I have a lot of information about Easter there have a lot of information about um, Bible versions uh, some of the information in the early days I was copying from Wikipedia uh, just to get uh, search engine optimization but um, now I'm, I'm going back through going, man, I've got, I've got a lot of Bart Ehrman rubbish on there. I've got a lot of Dan Wallace rubbish on there, James White stuff. I want to make it so it is uh, the premier website for King James material, for Texas Receptus material, for the received text. I believe that uh, Dean John Burgon, what he said, that the received text will have a revival once again. I believe this website is part of that. Uh, I want to see... Um, the Word of God go forward in many languages. At the moment, I'm living in Pakistan, and we're working on an Urdu translation. I was very saddened when I came to Pakistan and started looking up some of the scriptures and learning Urdu, that the the vast majority of places where modern versions take out scriptures are, are also missing in the Urdu translation. We've just finished a Khmer translation from the Texas Receptus, and so we have done a uh, New Testament, and we've also done one from the Masoretic Text, Old Testament. And so we are looking at publishing these, but we need sponsors. And so if anyone wants to help us, um, basically what we want to do is we want to um, just translate uh, accurate Bibles. And like the William Carey Bible Society, we have uh, a standard where Look, to do a, a, a version like Tyndale did is a good start, but ultimately we want to have um, committees who uh, are filled with competent men, men who know the know the language uh, very well, but we have to have starter, starter versions. And so many times there are versions out there that are okay and they just need um, some of the deleted parts of the Bible put back in. Uh, sometimes... Uh, this is impossible and has to be redone again. But if you want to help us in any way, or if you want to get involved, uh, we need translators. Um, unfortunately, we don't have money to give you. But if you want to work on a language, if you want to work on, we need a Japanese Bible. We did start a Japanese Bible, but 
it seems to have gone by the wayside. We want to translate um, Bibles into every known language. And we want to put all this information onto our website. We want to link everything to the Hebrew, the Aramaic, to the Greek, uh, all to Strong's reference numbers. And so we've got a lot of work to do. And so if you want to get involved, you can contact me. My name is Nick Sayers and my email address is ozclicks at gmail.com. That's A-U-S-C-L-I-X at gmail.com. Uh, you can contact me on Facebook, uh, add me, my, my name is uh, Nick Sayers, uh, and at the moment I'm in Pakistan, but um, usually I'm in Australia, and so uh, it should come up, either I'm in Pakistan or Australia, you can search for either one of them in Facebook, um, but yeah, we, we want to do um, translations into every language. Uh, what we've found is the, um, the Bible Society... Uh, the British and Foreign Bible Society. It started off well. Uh, the Trinitarian Bible Society is fantastic, but we want to see an acceleration of this work. Um, we, when we look at, say, the, the, the Trinitarian Bible Society, um, they're not doing a, a, a translation into Urdu. There's, there's millions of speakers of Urdu. There's, in Pakistan, there's 200 million people here. They need an accurate Bible, and there's just no one really interested in doing this. And so we either want to do this ourselves or we want to put into our website something that's already been done that's accurate, uh, or we want to spark interest in this. And so uh, if you want to get involved, um, contact me. Um, just jump on my website, tr.org.au and you'll be able to find uh, information there of how you can contact me. If you want to donate to us, uh, all uh, money donated will go to directly to translators or to people working on the website at the moment. We have four people working full-time on the website, and so just putting in information, putting in data, and um, also doing translation work. And so uh, thanks for listening today and if there's any other ideas uh, that you want me to do a video on um, any other words uh, particularly dealing with uh, the issue of Bible versions textual criticism um, contact me and I'll see what I can do okay thanks guys